Welcome to my channel. This is the playlist where I unbox my mini book subscription boxes, but today I'm doing things a little bit differently as I am still unboxing, but it's not a subscription service. I'm unboxing my shipment from The Book Outlet, which is an online retailer of bargain books. They boast about 50% off of their titles and free shipping when you spend more than $35, which <laughs> I definitely did. I wanted to give them a try as I've seen them all over Bookstagram and I really wanted to see what the quality of the books was going to be since the prices are pretty fantastic. So let's go ahead <laughs> and dive into my giant box that I got from them. As, as you can see, I uh, went a wee bit overboard and I bought 17 books, but in total it only cost me $110. So let's take a look at the quality of the books and I'll also tell you how much each title ended up costing me. So let's get into it. So first up, we have got All the Broken People by Leah Conan. I have two other books by Conan and I really enjoy her writing. She does pretty good like mysteries. I don't know if I would technically classify them as thrillers, although I think both of the books I got came from the book drop in their thriller subscription service. Mostly I really just like her characters. She writes really interesting characters and interesting plots. So all the broken people. And let's see, how much did this one cost me? Doo -doo -doo. This was $8.49. It is a hardback and quality looks pretty fantastic. All right, next up we have The Haunting of Maddie Claire by Simone St. James. I really enjoy Simone St. James. I think she does amazing haunted stories really well. The only one that I kind of struggled a little bit with, which will probably come as a surprise to a lot of people who love Simone St. James as well, was the Book of Cold Cases. I really think she could have leaned a lot more into like the ghost story aspect. So that was my only criticism with that book. I did just finish The Broken Girls, which I absolutely loved. So I had to go out and get The Haunting of Maddie Claire. And this one cost me $5.49. This is in the paperback format. I mean, there's a few like nicks down at the bottom, but, and then a red stain. Otherwise the book is in fine quality. Like honestly, this is what I would expect. Like if I was getting, uh, if I was getting a book from one of those free little libraries that are all over my neighborhood. All right. Next up, we have a book from one of my favorite authors, and that is Megan Miranda. So The Girl from Widow Hills. I think I got two Megan Miranda books in this shipment. But hey, when they're this good quality, why wouldn't I? Let's see, this one was $6.99. It is a paperback. I mean, a little bit of like bending and it's probably been tossed around a little bit, but still really decent quality. All right, next up, we have My Sweet Girl by Amanda J. Atisa, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that last name. I read You're Invited by Her, which was an add-on to my Book of the Month subscription. I really liked that book. I thought it was really well done. I think she has really good pacing. She has neat characters. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed that book, so I wanted to give her another try and just see if I continue to like her work. Uh, this one is a hardcover, and it cost me, where are you, $8.49. And again, the quality seems just fine. Oh no, she has a note from Riley Sager on the cover. I'm, I get, I'm sorry, I'm a bad thriller reader, I don't like him. Okay, next up we have... The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I still have, uh, what is it, How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix on my Tubi Red Pile, which will get done in this month, October, because I have been saving that for spooky season. And this one might get added. I am noticing, just picking it up, that it, there are some like structural issues with the book. But again, this only cost me $8.49. I think that is well worth it. The rest of it looks completely fine. I am noticing, yeah, a lot of them seem to have like little 
red spots on them or red dye, but it's not enough to make me mad that I bought this. All right, next up we have The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. I read Reckless Girl by, or Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins, which I really loved this summer while I was gone on vacation. So I wanna give her another try. The funny thing is I found out that Rachel Hawkins is also Aaron Sterling, who wrote The XX, which I didn't love, but I really like her writing under the Rachel Hawkins name. So I'm very excited to give this a try. Plus look at that cover. Although now looking at that cover, I might have to save this for next year. And seeing as I just bought 17 new books, and I have like 90 books on my to-be read pile, I can wait a little bit. Uh, this is a paperback and it cost me $7.49. Alright, next up got The Vacancy by Elizabeth Carpenter. This is a paperback. It looks like it's in fabulous condition. There's a little bit of warping on some of the pages up at the top, like if it got like shoved in somewhere or maybe wet or damp. Otherwise, it looks like it's in good condition as well. And this was $6.49. Alright, next up we have Alifair Burke, Find Me. This is a paperback. Again, good condition. Some minor markings on the bottom. This one was $7.49. Um, I have read another one of Alifair's, Alifair Burke's, and I think it is The Wife. I remember having kind of mixed reviews, so wanted to give them another shot just to see if maybe that just wasn't the book for me, or maybe the author's writing will end up not being for me. All right. Next up, we have Shiver by Allie Reynolds. This has been on, I have like a little uh, note on my phone of books that I just keep track of that like when I go to Barnes and Noble or if I'm out and about shopping, I will look for them. This has been on there for forever and I don't know if it's just a problem with my local Barnes and Noble that didn't have it. Never been able to find it in person. I've had it sitting on my like Amazon wish list for like holidays and stuff for like my family to know what to buy me and nobody has yet but that's okay because I just got it now um but I really wanted to give this one a try I mean plus look at that cover and I think it's like a locked room murder mystery which is a genre or style of book that I really love this was $6.99 this is a paperback and there are some tears on the back cover the front cover it's got a few like scratch marks and a little bit of warping Again, got this weird red dot, but for $7, this is great quality. All right, next up, we've got Every Last Fear by Alex Finlay. Finley, Finlay, sorry. And this one was $8.49. This is a hardcover book. Again, I'm kind of realizing that the hardcover books do a little bit better from the book outlet than the paperback which is kind of a bummer because I prefer paperbacks especially for like traveling just being able to throw it in my bag but I will definitely read this even if it is hardcover I mean I finally succumbed and checked out book of the month so obviously I'm okay with hardcover books but this was also one that I've had on my to be read for a while I think I applied for like an ARC copy through Goodreads and obviously was not chosen, but that's okay because I have it now. But I've heard really good things about Alex Finley, so I'm really excited to try that one out. All right, I feel like my box is going to be shifting here. Oh, ooh, okay. So Jennifer McMahon, The Drowning Kind. I love Jennifer McMahon's books. If you're looking for like spooky really good atmosphere kind of that haunted like you can't look away but you know you should because like something is going on this i love jennifer mcmahon i think she excels really well in that now that i'm thinking about it i have two of her books but i lent one to my sister and i haven't seen it back so might need to check in with her and see what she's doing with that copy 
but this cost me $6.99. Again, paperback. Honestly, this looks a little bit better than the first Megan Miranda I unboxed, so pretty good quality. All right. Next up, we've got The Nesting by C.J. Cook. This is also a paperback. Got a nice little red mark on it, otherwise, and some like scuffing and scratches up along the top. And then it's ooh, kind of a few tears down at the bottom. But this was, how much were you? God, I bought so many books. $6.49. And I really, really liked the Lighthouse Witches by CJ Cook. So I'm really excited to get into this. I really like the writing. I thought, again, kind of like spooky and you don't know what's going on. And is it supernatural? Is it a haunting? What is it? So very excited to get into this. This might also be going on my October to be read, which is probably at like 14 books now, which is not going to happen. Not at the pace I'm reading and not with how many haunted houses I have to go visit this month. So we'll see. All right, this guy got a little janky, but then we've got One by One by Ruth Ware. Looks in good condition. Just, yeah, another like ink blot splatter. No rips or tears. This one was six dollars and 99 cents for a paperback i have read i think just one ruth Ware. i think it was the death of mrs westaway really liked her writing i've heard great things about the turn of the key or the turn of the screw something like that haven't read that one yet and then there was another i think it was is it the woman in cabin 10 that she also wrote but I ruined that for myself by reading some uh, Goodreads reviews that had spoilers. So at that point, I wasn't going to invest the time in reading the book since I already knew what happened. And a lot of people also pointed out a trope that I don't really like with thrillers with the basically the too stupid to live female protagonist who is just drinking or taking pills and she's just making bad choice after bad choice just so like the plot can move forward and conflict can happen. I don't like that. So... I skipped on that one, but I am excited to try this because, again, I feel like it's kind of the, yep, Agatha Christie uh, getting snowed in, one by one, locked room murder mystery. Very excited to get to this. Might save this one for Christmas just because it looks like it's got, like, the winter vibes and maybe when my husband and I go skiing this winter, I'll read that while we're up there. All right. Next up, we have... Darcy Bell, All I Want. She's the author of A Simple Favor, which I haven't actually read that. I did watch the movie version on my flight home from Zurich because I had like 10 freaking hours to kill. So I watched like five movies. I really liked it. I am, I would be curious now to read the book knowing what I know from the movie just to see how it plays out. Because there are certain things in the movie that I'm like, ooh, I can see how this worked in the book. But in the movie, it's kind of like, but I did like the overall story, so I'm really hopeful for this one. And this is a paperback, and it cost me $6.99. Again, got some ink spotting up here. No rips or tears. Some inks, ink stains up at the top. And then the back cover just looks a little worse for wear, but nothing majorly wrong with the book. All right. Next up, we've got Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. I've never heard of Peter Swanson before. I was just going through the book outlets like thriller section. Thought the cover was really interesting. The uh, synopsis caught my attention. So just decided to add it, especially since this was $7.49. The book itself looks like it's in pretty good condition. Again, another ink stain at the bottom. Got some, a little bit of warping on the cover, but it doesn't look like any rips or tears within the book itself. Oh my God, I'm down to my final two books. All right. Ooh, okay. So next up we have Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker. If you are not new to my channel, you will know that I really love Wendy Walker's books. I think she writes really interesting characters. She also comes up with really interesting premises. I've read two or th three of her works now. 
and I had heard about Emma in the Night, just had never pulled the trigger on buying it. This cost me $6.99, and it is a paperback. Oh my god, I think it's the first one that doesn't have a little ink stain on it. There is some bending and warping on the back cover, but all the pages look to be in good condition. The cover's in good condition, because I'll be able to peel that sticker off. Okay, we're down to the last book in this box haul. And that is my other Megan Miranda, Such a Quiet Place. This one also has the ink stain that I think 99% of the books I got from this company have, but that's okay. The cover looks like it's in really good condition. Again, I'll be able to peel that sticker off. And this cost me $7.49 for the paperback. So again, all in 17 books in total for $110. And honestly, the quality is pretty good, especially for it being bargain books. They've got a little bit of wear and tear on them, but definitely not more. It was actually less than I was expecting. I truly didn't have the most optimistic of hopes going into this. I thought these books were going to be a little bit more ragged, a little bit more torn. I've gotten worse quality from Amazon for like brand new books. So I'm pretty pleased with this haul, pretty pleased with the quality. I will definitely be buying from them again, but maybe I will wait until 2024 as I now have quite a few books to get through along with my regular uh, shipments from the book subscription services that I do subscribe to. So let me know if you've bought from the book outlet before or if there are other websites just like it that you have had good shopping experiences with. Obviously, I'm always on the hunt for new books to add to my already full library, but please do leave a comment letting me know if there's anything else I should check out. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.